To know that we know what we know, and to know that we do not know what we do not know, that is true knowledge. Every light has its shadow, and every shadow hath a succeeding morning. To know the mighty works of God, to comprehend His wisdom and majesty and power, to appreciate, in degree, the wonderful workings of His laws, surely all this must be a pleasing and acceptable mode of worship to the Most High, to whom ignorance cannot be more grateful than knowledge. For I am not so enamored of my own opinions that I disregard what others may think of them. The universe, wrought for us by a supremely good and orderly creator. Nations are not ruined by one act of violence, but gradually and in an almost imperceptible manner by the depreciation of their circulating currency, through its excessive quantity. Finally we shall place the Sun himself at the center of the universe. Of all things visible, the highest is the heaven of the fixed stars. In the center of all rests the Sun. For who would place this lamp of a very beautiful temple in another or better place that this wherefrom it can illuminate everything at the same time? As a matter of fact, not unhappily do some call it the lantern, others, the mind and still others, the pilot of the world. Trismegistus calls it a visible god, Sophocles Electra, that which gazes upon all things. And so the sun, as if resting on a kingly throne, governs the family of stars which wheel around. Those things which I am saying now may be obscure, yet they will be made clearer in their proper place. For what could be more beautiful than the heavens which contain all beautiful things? I am aware that a philosopher's ideas are not subject to the judgment of ordinary persons, because it is his endeavor to seek the truth in all things, to the extent permitted to human reason by God. Mathematics is written for mathematicians. The massive bulk of the earth does indeed shrink to insignificance in comparison with the size of the heavens. Those who know that the consensus of many centuries has sanctioned the conception that the earth remains at rest in the middle of the heavens as its center, would, I reflected, regard it as an insane pronouncement if I made the opposite assertion that the earth moves. There may be babblers, wholly ignorant of mathematics, who dare to condemn my hypothesis, upon the authority of some part of the Bible twisted to suit their purpose. I value them not, and scorn their unfounded judgment. Finally we shall place the Sun himself at the center of the universe. All this is suggested by the system of procession of events and the harmony of the whole universe, if only we face the facts, as they say, with eyes wide open. Among the authorities it is generally agreed that the Earth is at rest in the middle of the universe, and they regard it as inconceivable and even ridiculous to hold the opposite opinion. However, if we consider it more closely the question will be seen to be still unsettled, and so decidedly not to be despised. For every apparent change in respect of position is due to motion of the object observed, or of the observer, or indeed to an unequal change of both. At rest, however, in the middle of everything is the sun. Moreover, since the sun remains stationary, whatever appears as a motion of the sun is really due rather to the motion of the earth. For when a ship is floating calmly along, the sailors see its motion mirrored in everything outside, while on the other hand they suppose that they are stationary, together with everything on board. In the same way, the motion of the earth can unquestionably produce the impression that the entire universe is rotating. 
The Earth together with its surrounding waters must in fact have such a shape as its shadow reveals, for it eclipses the moon with the arc of a perfect circle. In so many and such important ways, then, do the planets bear witness to the Earth's mobility. In the midst of all dwells the sun. Although all the good art serve to draw man's mind away from vices and lead it toward better things, this function can be more fully performed by this art, which also provides extraordinary intellectual pleasure. Therefore, when I considered this carefully, the contempt which I had to fear because of the novelty and apparent absurdity of my view, nearly induced me to abandon utterly the work I had begun. I shall now recall to mind that the motion of the heavenly bodies is circular, since the motion appropriate to a sphere is rotation in a circle. The scorn which I had reason to fear on account of the novelty and unconventionality of my opinion almost induced me to abandon completely the work which I had undertaken. Astronomy is written for astronomers. To them my work too will seem, unless I am mistaken, to make some contribution. I can easily conceive, most holy father, that as soon as some people learn that in this book which I have written concerning the revolutions of the heavenly bodies, I ascribe certain motions to the earth, they will cry out at once that I and my theory should be rejected. So far as hypotheses are concerned, let no one expect anything certain from astronomy, which cannot furnish it lest he accept as the truth ideas conceived for another purpose, and depart from this study a greater fool than when he entered it. Therefore, in the course of the work I have followed this plan, I describe in the first book all the positions of the orbits together with the movements which I ascribe to the earth, in order that this book might contain, as it were, the general scheme of the universe. 